Hey there, Facebook. <clears throat> Waiting for my phone screen to flip for my Periscope audience to come up. Prophet David Taylor here. So glad to join you on this uh, December 23rd. <clears throat> Got a few things to pull up. There we go. Hello, Periscope. Got a few things to pull up, and we're going to jump right into the prophetic word. Now, this is my last uh, prophetic word for this year. Okay. This is my last prophetic word for this year. Okay, last prophetic word for this year. So, <clears throat> hold on, just setting, getting a few things together, and there we go. Okay, so this is my last prophetic word for 2018. <clears throat> and I'll tell you uh, what the rest of the year is going to look like. I'll tell you uh, what's going on, okay? So, let's first uh, have a word of prayer. So thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this time. Thank you, O God, for being used by you. We invite you in. We invoke you in, O God, because we know you do not force your love or your grace on anyone. So I humbly ask you in, O God, be in the midst of this broadcast. Say what you want to say. Speak through me, O God. Use me to your glory, to your honor, to extend your kingdom, to bring glory to the name of Jesus Christ. And I thank you for the opportunity to be a part of your kingdom and your program, for there is no greater call in life than to walk in obedience and love and humility with you. So we ask you to do this, Lord, so that you might be glorified, so that the saints might be edified, and that the demons might be terrified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to give you a lot of information, so you're going to have to watch this video more than one time. Speaking of which, I want to apologize for last week. I don't know what happened. It seems like my Facebook video kept freezing. I don't know. I don't know what happened. But if ever that happens, then I have my Periscope video didn't freeze. And so I put a link to my Periscope version on my Facebook page and also on my YouTube page. So if ever you're watching, you know, any part of the broadcast and things just freeze up and the video becomes unwatchable or hard to follow or you miss some of what I say, I will put a better copy, because I have more than one thing going at a time, I will put a better copy in one of the other channels. So when I broadcast, I'm on Facebook and Periscope Live, and then it gets uploaded to YouTube by the middle of the week. Okay? So that's what happened last week. So again, you can just follow that Periscope link, and you can see the, the video from last week uninterrupted. Okay? All right. <clears throat> What's my tagline? My tagline is that God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. One more time. God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. Okay? So again, welcome to all my audiences, Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, and wherever else this broadcast might be going. <clears throat> now, when you're watching this video, at any point, if you're watching me live or if you watch it later, please like and share. The reason I ask you to do that is because when God gives a prophetic word, it's designed to bless nations. So it needs to go across the world. It needs to be exposed to millions of people, okay? Because whenever God studied the scriptures, whenever the Lord released a prophetic word, it was designed to bless a nation, okay? So I want you to please like and share this video. If you're watching me live or if you're watching the replay, please like and share on all your social media channels. Uh, support. If you want to sow into my ministry, remember that Matthew 10.41 says, whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Okay? So God will bless you the same way he blesses us the prophets when you sow into a prophetic ministry. So for donations, I have a paypal.me link on my Facebook Live and Periscope profiles and also my Twitter feed. Also, there's an Amazon Smile link uh, above every video. So where you shop at Amazon, they give a portion to Prophet David Taylor NFP because uh, my ministry is a not-for-profit. Uh, next year, I'm going to get um, Cash App and maybe Zelle, so stuff is going to be even easier. So if you want to donate, uh, those are the channels right now. There's going to be more next year. And, you know, I appreciate uh, your financial support. <clears throat> How to find me? I always hashtag everything I do with hashtag PDT, Okay. Hashtag PDT. There's another prophet or apostle out there named David E. Taylor. That's not me. My middle name is M. Starts with an M. So I always hashtag everything I do with hashtag PDT. That's how you know it's me. And that's how you find me online. Okay? So, 
Uh, this is my regular time, fa uh, live on Facebook and Periscope, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Sunday afternoons. And then second Thursday nights at 7 o'clock p.m., I do a broadcast called No More Genies. Okay? No More Genies, in which I talk about genie concept and how we need to get rid of the genie concept of God and come back to true faith based on God's word. Okay, so I already did my last one for the year uh, last week. And you can watch the, the whole uh, set of Genie videos either on my Facebook page or on, on my YouTube channel. They're all on a playlist, so you can watch them all in a row. So again, this is the last broadcast, live broadcast that I'm doing for this year. So I won't be on for the next two Sundays. I won't be back until uh, January 1st. Let me look at that calendar. Not January 1st, January 6th, I believe it is. But I want to give you the exact date. Um, so this is the last one. So I'm going to be gone next week, which is the 30th. Uh, and so then, yeah, so I'll actually be on. Uh, that's the first Sunday in the New Year's, January 6th. That's when I'll be back. So I'll only be gone one Sunday. Okay, next Sunday. And then on January 6th, I'll be back. Okay? So <clears throat> let's dive right into our prophetic word for today. Our prophetic word today has to do with something that happens uh, every time at the end of the year. So the name of today's prophetic word, the name of today's broadcast is Get Your Grades from Jesus. Okay? Get Your Grades from Jesus. What in the world do I mean by that? What do I mean, Get Your Grades from Jesus? That's found in the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is the last book in the Bible. Okay? Book of Revelation is the last book of the Bible chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2, and Revelation chapter 3. In Revelation chapter 2 <clears throat> and Revelation chapter 3, Jesus is giving the grades to the seven churches in Asia. But that, that, that operation was not just for them. The Lord is speaking from heaven now, giving grades to the body of Christ. So let me just read you a few verses to see what I'm talking about. We're going to start in Revelation chapter 2, we're going to read verses 1 through 7. <clears throat> to the angel of the church in Ephesus right Now that word there translated angel is better translated messenger. So he's really talking to the apostle or the pastor of the church. Okay? They translated an angel, but it's better translated messenger, which means the word apostle means messenger or sent one. So he's talking to the head of the church in Ephesus. Okay? These are the words, I'm reading out of the NIV. These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life which is in the paradise of God. Wow, okay, the Lord is giving the grace to the church in Ephesus, to the pastor in the church in Ephesus. He's talking about the congregation. The Lord is giving out grades. He says, I know your deeds. I know what you're doing. I know your work ethic, and I know how you've hung in there. You persevered. I know you can't tolerate wicked people. You've tested people who said they were apostles and found them to be false. <clears throat> You've endured hardships for my name, and you haven't grown weary. And then the Lord said, yet. So the Lord started out with all these compliments. This is all the stuff you're doing right. Then he said, yet I hold this against you. The Lord said, but I still have an issue with you. He said, you have forsaken the love you had at first. <clears throat> what that is talking about, the Lord has said, you don't love me like you used to. Because, you know, your relationship with Christ can be just like in terms of the infatuation phase, when you first get saved, you can be so in love with Jesus. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Don't miss a church service. Memorize the Bible, all that. And then as time goes on, it kind of cools off. The Lord says he's got a problem with that. The Lord wants you to love him with the same kind of fervency and excitement 
and energy that you did when you first got saved, just like your other love relationships. Your husband or your wife doesn't want you to get so common with them that you don't get excited when they come in the room, okay? So the Lord says, consider how far you have fallen. In other words, the Lord is like, remember how you used to love me. Repent and do the things you did at first. So in other words, go back to when you first met me, when you first fell in love with Jesus, and do that again. Okay, so the Lord says, in spite of all the good things I see and all the good things you're doing, you've forsaken the love you had at first. You don't love me like you did at first. And I have an issue with that. So repent. Repent means to change your mind and go back and remember how you used to love me and love me like that again. Then he says, if you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Wow. So the Lord says, if you don't love me like you used to, if you don't recommit yourself to loving me, I'm going to take your church out the mix. Oh, my goodness. He said, I'm going to remove your lampstand. You will no longer be a light unto the world if you don't love the Lord. How many times have we seen that happen in life? Well, people start out one way and then they hit a point in their ministry and they just don't love the Lord anymore. They might be going through the motions. They might be doing all these things, but they don't really love the Lord like they used to. The Lord said, I'm going to take you out the picture. Holy cow, okay? But he says, but you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, the Nicolaitans were a group during that time that were doing some wicked things <clears throat> and were speaking against the gospel and a lot of stuff they did the Lord didn't like. So you're saying the people in Ephesus stood against what the Nicolaitans were doing. Jesus said that was good because I hate what they do too. And then the Lord said, whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now that's key. He says, whoever has ears, let him hear. In the King James, it says, he that hath an ear, let him hear. You know what that means? That means all Christians are not trying to hear from the Lord, which is a mistake. <laughs> it's a mistake if you're ignoring what the Lord is saying and you're a Christian. If you're just going about your business, doing all your religious works, but you're not really listening to what Jesus is saying, that's a mistake. So he says, whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. As the Lord said, you need to hear what I'm saying to you through the Holy Ghost. To the one who is victorious, in the King James it says, he that overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. So in every church that the Lord goes through in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, he ends it the same way. Every time he gives the grace, he ends it the same way. He that hath an ear, let him hear. And then he speaks about the reward that he gives to those that overcome. That is Jesus giving us our grace from heaven. When the Lord raised himself up from the dead, he stayed on earth 40 more days. That's a little over a month. And then he stepped on a cloud and floated back up to heaven. Then he sent the Holy Ghost to be with us on the day of Pentecost. But he took his place at the right hand of the Father as the mediator, as the intercessor, as the overcomer, as the Alpha and Omega, as the one with the keys of hell and death, because the Lord finished his earthly work, okay? So what is Jesus doing now? He's not just making intercession and mediating the new covenant for us before the Father. He's also giving us our grades. Do you understand? Get your grades from Jesus now. Don't wait until you die. A lot of Christians are going to fool around and wait until they die. And that's the first time you ever ask the Lord, how am I living? Don't wait until you die. Okay? You don't want to wait until you die. So the Lord is giving us our grades now. So at the end of this year, I'm going to give what I call a prophetic locator word. I'm going to have two prophetic locator words. I'm not going to do them live. They're going to be on my YouTube channel. The first one's going to drop on December 31st, where I'm going to go before the Lord and ask him what he has to say about 2018. And the Lord is going to, whatever word he wants to release to the body of Christ, he's going to, he's going to show that to me, and that will drop on December 31st. And then I'm going to ask him, how does he want us to start 2019? Because remember, the Lord has already lived 2019. Jesus has already completely walked through 2019. He knows everything that's going to happen. So he wants to tell you how to start your year right in obedience to him. Because the Lord knows everything that's going to happen. He's already lived it. Okay? So I'm going to release a prophetic locator word on my YouTube channel on December 31st for 2018. 
and January 1st for 2019. That's getting our grades from Jesus now. But that will be a, a general word. I don't know if the Lord will show me anything particular or specific. It might just be generally for the body of Christ. You need to go before the Lord and get your own personal grades. Okay? You need to go before the Lord and get your own personal grades. Okay? And <clears throat> that means that you go before the Lord and you ask him, what are you pleased with in my life? What are you de displeased with in my life? What have I done right this year and what have I failed or what do I need to work on? Because you see that passage I just read you out of Revelation chapter 2. Did you notice the Lord was very detailed? He said, I know your deeds, I know your work ethic, I know how you persevered. You can't stand wicked people. You tested false apostles. You've endured hardships for my name. You haven't grown weary. Look at that. It's very specific. And then he says, I hold this against you. You've forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how you've fallen. Repent. That's very specific. You have to go before the Lord. That's why I tell you all the time. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, we are not a substitute for your relationship with Christ. We're here to help you. The apostolic, prophetic, evangelical education and the pastoral is here to help you in your relationship with God, not to substitute for your relationship with God. You better know the Lord for yourself. That's why you hear me say it all the time. you got to read the scriptures for yourself. You have to go before the Lord and get uh, your own personal grades from Jesus. You ask Jesus specifically what I'm telling you. Lord, what have I done this year that you are pleased with? And then let him tell you. Lord, what have I done this year that you are displeased with? And then let him tell you. What do I need to work on? Okay? Get your grades from Jesus. And then when you go into 2019, don't just start the year. Ask the Lord, what is your will for 2019 for me? Start the year by saying, not my will, but thine be done. And then let the Lord show you the plan. And whatever level of detail Jesus gives you, Write it down. If the Lord gives you an assignment quarter by quarter, write it down. If he gives you an assignment month by month, write it down. If he gives you something general for the whole year, write, whatever the Lord says to you, because God does not deal with everybody the same way. Okay? So that's why you can't model your relationship with God on other people. I know how the Lord deals with me, but that's how he deals with me. God deals with us all very, very differently. For example, you might pray to the Lord and ask him to give you your grades, and he gives you a dream. You might pray to the Lord and ask him to give you your grades, and then you felt led to a scripture. You might pray to the Lord and ask him to give you your grades, and then you hear a sermon that's just speaking right to you. It's just reading your mail. It's just walking all up and down your street. You see what I mean? So God deals with everybody differently, and the way he deals with you is the way he deals with you, and that ain't none of my business, and I'm not in it. I'm responsible for how he deals with me. But it is my responsibility to let you know that you need to get your grades from the Lord for yourself. Ask the Lord personally. You ask him. Now, I know <clears throat> that might seem scary, especially if you've never done it before. Excuse me. If you have never asked Jesus for your grades, you might be kind of hesitant. I stop by to tell you, even if the Lord has a strong word of rebuke for you, like he does for the first church at Ephesus, It'll be done in love. He's saying that to you because he loves you. Because he doesn't want you to waste your life. Okay? He doesn't want you to waste your life. He wants you to get as much right in this life as you can. Do you know why? I will show you why. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 through 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 through 11. Then I'm going to show you another verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 through 11, I'm reading out of, the, out of the New King James Version, reads like this. Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the, in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, 
we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your consciences. Wow. Okay, I don't have time to exegete all of those, because wow. But it says, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. This is why, you know, I started the No More Genie series. This is why I'm always telling you not to get religion. Get relationship. Don't just trust that stuff that mama and them said and grandmama and them said. And I'm not speaking against your foreparents. That's not what I'm doing. I'm saying all that stuff that you heard while you were growing up, don't trust that. Read the word. The word says that we all, see, when you go to heaven, They've, they've always painted the picture for you about how I'm on my way to heaven and so glad and the day rejoicing. It's going to be all that cool stuff. But before you get to that, you got to go to the judgment seat of Christ. That's the first place you going after you die, if you didn't know that. As soon as your spirit steps out of your body and your spirit gets lifted up into heaven, first place you going is the judgment seat of Christ. And then it says each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. That means the Lord is going to judge us for how we lived in these clay bodies. He's going to judge us for how we live. That is why you don't want to wait until you die to find out what Jesus thinks. Because once you die, it's over. Your, your life is written. You can't come back here and live it again. Okay? Then he says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. You know what that means? That means that the, the Lord is way more deep and intense and terrible and the presence of God is way more than you think it is. So knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God and I also trust are well known in your consciences. What that means is that Paul is confident in his relationship with the Lord. Paul's like, well, I know the Lord knows us. I know he, he knows me. And that's how, that's what you want to have with God, is confidence. Knowing that you know him and he knows you. So, do you know how God is going to judge you? He's going to judge you out of the book of your life. But I mean, it's literally a book with your name on it. It's literally a book of your life. Where does it say that, Prophet Taylor? It says that in Psalm 139, verse is... There we go. Verses 13 through 18. Uh, and I think I need to go ahead on and flip that to the King James Version. That's a little bit more. So Psalm, the book of Psalms, right in the middle of the Bible, uh, chapter 139, verses 13 through 18. Verse 13 says, For thou hast possessed my reins. That means kidneys or guts. It means that God understands you way down in your gut. That word reigns there means kidneys. So it's saying the same way when we use the word gut. For thou hast possessed my guts. God's, David is saying, Lord, you got me way down in here. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. When your mother was pregnant with you, God was covering you. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being imperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are their thoughts unto me, O God, how great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. So King David is saying that we're on God's mind all the time. But I want you to pay attention to verse 16. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being imperfect. He's talking about you in your unformed state in your mother's womb, in your embryonic state. He's talking about where you were growing in your mother's belly. God was looking right at you. And then he says, and in thy book, there it is, all my members. That word members does not just mean like your arms or your fingers or your eyes or your feet. It also is translated days. And in thy book all my days were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as, that, when as yet there was none of them. You know what that means? That means that God had the book of your life before you lived your life. The book of your life has at least two parts. On one side of the book of your life is all the stuff that God wanted you to do. That's what he wrote down when your mom was pregnant with you. 
all the anointings, all the giftings, all the gracings, who you're supposed to marry, the kids you're supposed to have, where you're supposed to live every decade of your life, if you're supposed to go to school. Every single element of the will of God is written down on one part of the book of your life. Your personal life, the book with your name on it. One side of that book has the will of God from birth to death. The other side of that book is a blank page. And every day you live, you write down what you chose to do that day with your life. And when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, he's literally going to open the book of your life and he's going to have his will on one side and your choices on the other and he's going to judge you accordingly. Wow. Holy cow. Think about that. See, that's going to be messing with your brain because every time I teach that, that just messes with my whole mind. The fact that he's been watching me, I mean, God knows us before we're born. But the fact that while my mother was carrying me, while I was forming inside my mom, God was looking at me then, and he already wrote my life down. And everything he wanted me to be, and everything he wanted me to do, and everything he wanted to give me, and every place he wanted me to go, he already had it written down when my mother was pregnant with me. Holy cow. And then, when I came out of my mother's womb, I have free choice. So if I seek after him and he tells me his will and I do it, then he blesses me. If I don't do his will, if I ignore him, if I don't do what he said, then it brings a curse. And then after you die, he's going to judge you based on how you lived your life. That ain't nothing to play with. So what you want to do is you want to die with confidence. You want to die. I know, I know you may have never heard that your whole entire life. You want to die with confidence. Uh, who died with confidence? Paul died with confidence. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, there it is, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but to all them also that love his appearing. That's how you want to die. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I did what I was supposed to do with my life, and I didn't turn my back on the faith. Now I got a crown of righteousness from the righteous judge. That's how you want to die. Who else died with confidence? Peter. Peter died with confidence. 2 Peter, verse 1, chapter 14. Since I know that it, he's talking about his body. Well, let's, let me read verse 13. Verse 13 says, I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of my body. Since I know that it, the tent of my body, will soon be laid aside, as our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. Jesus told Peter when he was about to die. Okay? So Peter was getting ready to die with confidence. He knew he was about to die. Okay? Uh, who else died with confidence? Apostle John. Apostle John is the one that wrote the book of Revelation. Revelation 22 and 20. He which testifieth these things says, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Now, the Lord just showed Apostle John the end of the world and all those incredible images that are in the book of Revelation. John just saw it, and John said, even so, come Lord Jesus, because John was dying with confidence because they knew that they knew the Lord. Paul knew that he knew the Lord and that the Lord knew him. Peter knew that he knew the Lord and that the Lord knew him. John knew that he knew the Lord and the Lord knew him. That's how you die with confidence, when you know the Lord and you know he knows you. But if you never ask Jesus for your grades... If you've never asked the Lord, how am I doing? Are you pleased with me? Am I living the life you want me, the life you wrote down when my mother was pregnant with me? Am I living that life? Am I living your will? Or am I just doing my thing? Because if you just do your thing, it's not going to count. You're going to live your 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, yea, even 100 years of life on earth, stand before the Lord, and it's not going to count. If you didn't live for Christ. What a thing to find out after you get there. Do you really want to wait till you stand up before the Lord and then find out your life didn't count at all? That's what's going to happen to a lot of Christians because a lot of Christians are running their own program. Because remember, I read it to you in Revelation chapter 2. The Lord is very specific. He's got a list of the things you're doing right, the things he's pleased with, and then he's got some stuff that he's got an issue with that you need to work on, that you need to change. And Jesus will give you your grace now. How do I know that? Because he says, whoever has ears, let him hear 
what the Spirit says to the churches. Not will say. It doesn't, he doesn't say, let him hear what the Spirit will say to the church. He says, whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says. Say it to the churches. The Lord is talking to us right now. That means you're supposed to get your grace from Jesus right now. You understand? And so, uh, you know, I want to encourage you. I want to exhort you. Uh, uh, let me give you uh, another verse. Matthew 16, 25, because I know the challenge. The challenge is we all have the same challenge, okay? It's easy to accept Jesus as Savior because all you have to do is stand there, believe it, and receive it. You know why? Because he already did all the work. The challenge is to accept Jesus as Lord, meaning you let go of the Lordship rights of your life and you let the Lord take over, okay? You let the Lord tell you what to do. You let him run your life. That's what we don't want to do. We don't want to give up control. But the Lord tells us the truth about that. And here it is in Matthew 16, 24, 25, and 26. Matthew, first book of the New Testament, chapter 16, verses 24, 25, and 26. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? So the Lord is telling us right there, if you want to come after him, see that's accepting him as Lord. To accept Jesus as Savior, he did that work on Calvary's cross. And all you have to do is stand there and receive it. That's why people love to preach salvation so much, because you don't have to do anything but believe it and receive it. But if you want to come after him, now that's accepting him, accepting him as Lord. That's following his plan, following his leadership. The Lord said, if you want to do that, you've got to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow him. Because if you're trying to hold on to your life, you're going to lose it. And if you lose your life for his sake, then you find it. He's talking about letting go of your plan and accepting his plan. He's talking about you letting go of the lordship rights of your life and giving Jesus Christ the lordship rights of your life. The good news is, I stopped by to tell you, that his plan is better. I know you might be afraid. I know maybe you've never asked the Lord for grace before. I know maybe you're struggling. I stopped by to tell you, whatever it is the Lord's trying to get you to do is better. Is better than what you wanted to do. I know it doesn't seem like it. I know it doesn't look like it. And I know it not, might not make sense to your natural mind, but it's better. Whatever the Lord Jesus Christ is calling you to do, it's better than the life you would live on your own. Okay? There's more joy. There's more peace. There's more purpose. There's more power. There's more prosperity. There's more everything. There's more everything on the path that God has for you. There's also persecutions, definitely persecutions, joy, peace, prosperity, power, purpose with persecutions, okay? But everything on the path that God has for you is better. So the Lord tells us if you hold on to the lordship of your life, you're going to lose it. You're going to stand before the Lord and be bankrupt. You don't have nothing to show for your life because you never did what the Lord told you to do. And you never asked Jesus for your grades. If you let go of your life and accept him not just as Savior, but also as Lord, and let him tell you what to do, then that's when you find your purpose, your meaning, your power, all that, because all that comes from him. And then that's why, again, I beseech you, brethren, to get your grades from Jesus now. Do not wait. Uh, don't live another year. You don't know. You might die in 2019. You ever think about that? 2019 might be the last year you draw breath because none of us know. Okay? You don't know unless the Lord tells you, like you told Peter. And so, the thing to do is don't live another year without getting your grace from Jesus. So when 2018 closes out, the last day of this year, make it your business. Listen to the prophetic word that I release, which will probably generally be to the body of Christ. And then after you listen to that, go before the Lord and get your personal locator word. Get your personal grace from Jesus, where the Lord Jesus Christ can tell you what he's pleased with, and what he has an issue with and what you need to work on and repent of. Okay? And then start your 2019 the same way. 
listen to the prophetic locator word for 2019 I'm going to release, and then ask the Lord personally, what do you want me to do in 2019? Okay? That's the thing to do. Okay? Because you don't want to wait until you die. You won't have a chance to live your life over. Okay? Your life will be done. The book of your life will be written. And God's going to judge you. Your life is over. You don't get to live it again. Get your grace from Jesus now. Okay? All right. So that's our prophetic word for this week. So again, this is my last broadcast for the year. I won't be on uh, next week, but I will be on on the 6th. Okay? So the prophetic locator word is going to drop on December 31st and January 1st, okay? That's the general one I'm going to release. Get your personal one in your quiet time with the Lord, okay? If you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen now. If you have any prayer requests, anything you want me to pray for, put them on the screen now, Facebook and Periscope people. Okay, let me see if there's anything that anybody needs healing for. Mm, yes, okay. Somebody looking at me right now, you got stomach problems. Put your hand on the screen. In the name of Jesus, I release the word of God and the healing anointing of God. For with his stripes, we are healed. He took all of our pain and our griefs and our infirmities on the cross. So with his stripes, right, right now, we are healed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the true and the living God, amen. Now, I felt the power of God in my stomach as I was talking. So you should feel the power of God. Whenever I tell you to put your hand on the screen, it's to give your impartation so the anointing can transfer. You'll feel it. It's unmistakable. You'll feel it come into your body and heal you. So let me see if there's anything else. Eyes, okay? The Lord is saying somebody out there is having trouble with your eyes. Maybe glaucoma. Maybe cataracts. Okay, do this. Put your fingers on your eyes. And say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by his stripes I am healed, I command my eyes to be every whit whole, and I rebuke the spirit of blindness, glaucoma, and cataracts. And I break it off me right now in Jesus' name. Okay? You'll feel the healing power of God in your eyes if you do it, like I just showed you how to do it. Okay? All right, uh, next portion, the Holy Spirit is telling me that there is some unbelief out there right now. I stopped by to tell you that if you are walking in unbelief, if you're not believing what you're hearing through the prophetic word, you need to repent of that unbelief because I showed it to you in Scripture. Let me say this because I know sometimes we forget. Let me, let me remind you that we do not get to cherry pick which scriptures we like and which scriptures we don't like. I know a lot of people do that, especially in America. That's, excuse me, a very American thing to do, to just pick out the scriptures you like and ignore the stuff you don't like. But the Bible doesn't work that way. In Matthew 4, 4, Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So if you're not believing what you're hearing me say right now, then go to the scripture references that I get. That's why I show you in the scripture, okay? Believe the word of God. See, the person that God uses to speak through, that's not important. It's not about me. It's about hearing what the Lord has to say, okay? And you can go read the scriptures for yourself, okay? So the, Lord, the Holy Ghost is telling me there's too much unbelief out there. So that means you got to take this message seriously. You got to get, you got to stop running from the Lord. You got to stop fighting the Lord and you got to get your grades. You got to ask Jesus, how am I doing? Are you pleased? What are you pleased with? And what do I need to change and work on? You must take that seriously. Okay. So like I say, at the beginning of each of my broadcasts, I give you a lot of information. You're going to have to watch this video again. So I strongly encourage you on Facebook or Periscope or YouTube to watch this video again because I gave you a lot of information. But please take it seriously and look up the scriptures for yourself. Okay? I showed you scriptures about how to die, about where the judgment seat is, about the Lord giving grades. I showed you all that about when your mother's pregnant with you. Okay? So look up the scriptures that I gave during this broadcast and read the Bible for yourself because you need to come out of your unbelief. 
okay? Because you don't want to wait till you see. What a lot of people don't understand is that once you hear the word from the mouth of an apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher, once you hear the word of God coming forth, you're responsible for what you heard. So you can't stand before God and play crazy and say, well, Lord, I didn't know. God's going to say, yes, you did, because I sent my word through my servants. So once you hear the anointed word of God, you're responsible. So that's why I say follow up with your own personal study and study the scriptures for yourself. Because you're going to be responsible before God. When you stand before God, I already told you, he's going to go through your life day by day, word by word, choice by choice. Okay? All right. When I close my eyes like that, I'm listening to the Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing if there's anything else the Spirit of God wants to do or say. Okay, so I think that's it. So, again, uh, I want you to get ready to receive the Prophetic Locator Word on December 31st. It'll be on my YouTube channel. Uh, there are always links on my Facebook page. So if you watch me on Facebook, there'll be a link. And if you watch me on Periscope, you got to go to my YouTube channel because I don't think I can put links on my Periscope. I can put them on my Twitter page, and I do. But, you know, you need to go on and check out my YouTube channel so you get that Prophetic Locator Word on December 31st. 2018, so we can get our grace from the Lord for 2018, and then uh, January 1st, 2019, so we can hear what the Lord has to say to start out the year, because why would we want to live a whole other year out of sync with Jesus? The Lord is here, and we're, we're disobedient, we're, we're out of sync, we're bones out of joint. Why? Why do we want to do that? Okay, we don't want to spend another day out of our lives out of sync with Christ, and I just showed you why that's so important from the scriptures, Okay. All right, so thank you so much for tuning in. Again, this is my last live broadcast for the year. So I won't be on next Sunday, December 30th. I will not be on. I will be back the following Sunday on January 6th. So I will be back in two weeks live. And then check the pages for the YouTube links, okay? Remember to like and share. This prophetic word is designed to bless nations, so it needs to grow out to me. And so like and share this with as many people as you can. Because Lord knows we all... Now remember, remember I tell you all the time, I've already gone before the Lord and asked him about my 2018. Okay? I've already asked him to put his finger on what he's pleased with and what I need to work on. So I say that to let you know that I'm always doing what I'm saying to you. Because I know many times people have a problem with spiritual leadership and, you know, sometimes, you know, they don't practice what they preach and they say one thing and do another. I'm always doing what I'm saying to you. So I have already gone before the Lord for 2018 and I'm excited about 2019. But yes, I have got, I've done it. Okay. So I'm not telling you to do anything that I'm not doing. Okay. So, uh, so please like and share. Please go before the Lord and get your grades. I'll see you live in two weeks. Thank you so much for all your support. This year, thank you for tuning in live. Thank you for all that you've done. You know, I count it an honor and a privilege to be a prophet in God's kingdom uh, because God does not need me. God don't need me for nothing. Okay? God gives us opportunities to be a part of his plan and program. Okay? And I count myself blessed to be a part of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, and I trust that you do too. All right, God bless you. Have a great Christmas. I can't believe Christmas is in two days. Can you believe that? Have a great Christmas. Uh, have a great New Year's. Uh, be safe. Enjoy your friends. Enjoy your family. I'll see you in two weeks on January 6th. And remember, get your grades from Jesus now. God bless.